Last week, I said that the iPhone 15 Pro Max might be the best smartphone on the market, but I was a little bit non-committal with that because I knew this was coming. I recently called the iPhone 15 Pro Max the best iPhone Apple has ever made, which is always the case, obviously, because they have to make a better one each year. But I also claimed that it could be the best smartphone on the market. The question is, now that I've been playing with the Google Pixel 8 Pro for the last week, has that opinion changed? And with Google focusing on AI massively and some very big camera improvements and one very unusual and unexpected addition to this phone. Well, how does that compare against Apple's efforts? And more importantly, should you buy the Pixel 8 Pro? There's already loads of Pixel 8 Pro reviews out there at the moment. So in this video, I'm going to focus on what I think matters about Google's latest flagship. And from this point forwards, all of this talking to camera stuff is being shot on the Pixel 8 Pro with the selfie cam and the built-in mic. Oh, and some of the B-roll of this phone is being shot with the Pixel 8. So in a way, you're getting a double review here. Okay, let's start with the specs. And the Google Pixel 8 Pro is powered by the Tensor G3 chip. It's a big upgrade apparently over the G2 chip, although they didn't go into a huge amount of detail about what they've done, apart from the fact that the AI capabilities have been massively improved. I'll get onto that later, but also this has a 6.7 inch Super Actua display, which is utterly lovely. It's also ridiculously bright, 2,400 nits of peak brightness. I looked into this and that matches the Oppo Find X6 Pro, which was the previous king of brightness, and it completely smashes the Pixel 7 Pro, which was 1,600 nits of peak brightness. The iPhone 15 Pro Max goes to 2,000 nits, and the S23 Ultra from Samsung only goes to 1,750. When it comes to the camera system, every single lens has been updated. I won't go into all the numbers because there's far too many of them, but basically the standard zoom, the ultra wide, and the telephoto have all had massive upgrades in terms of their low light capabilities. So they can let in more light, which means they can deal with low light situations much better. This front facing camera has had an upgrade as well and now has autofocus. The only other things to mention are the fact that it has 12 gigabytes of RAM, it comes pre-installed with Android 14, and it has seven years of updates. There's been an awful lot said about that, but it can only be a good thing. Now, it is more expensive this year. There's been a price hike of £100 and $100, but it is still cheaper than the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Right, let's talk about the design and the display very quickly. And Google sent me, and I think every other reviewer, the bay blue version of the Pixel 8 Pro. And I'm not going to be around the bush it's now the best looking smartphone on the market. Fight me in the comments. Unboxing this Bay Blue Pixel 8 Pro was a real wow moment. It's very hard to explain unless you see it in person, but it's a, it's a blue that kind of changes shade in different types of light. Sometimes it's very muted and other times it's really vibrant. It's just utterly lovely. But if you don't like Bay Blue, you can go for Obsidian, which is basically black, or porcelain, which is essentially white. But once again, the Pixel 8 Pro is a very premium looking and feeling phone. I love the matte back. I like the polished aluminium sides. The only slight downside again is that the camera housing does scratch quite easily. I really want to see a different material on the Pixel 9 Pro. When it comes to this 6.7 inch Super Actua display, it's a bit of a masterpiece. It's colorful, it's sharp, it's vibrant, and that 2,400 nits is just ridiculous. And it does make a big difference in direct sunlight. Now next, I would normally talk about the camera system, but there's something else much more impressive that we need to cover. So as mentioned earlier, the new Tensor G3 chip has been completely redesigned and they've really focused on AI. And I know we can take the mickey out of Google for saying the word or the phrase AI over and over again, but I think that's missing the point because what they're doing with AI and what they're doing with the Pixel 8 Pro and the Pixel 8 as well actually, 
is really impressive. And more importantly, it's not gimmicky. The things they're building into these devices are very exciting and very usable. Now, one of the first things they've done is improve some of the existing AI features for calling, which is very difficult to show in this review. But basically, call assist, for instance, which is when the phone navigates its way through phone trees for you, so you don't have to sit there and press buttons to get to the right people. That's been improved. Clear calling has also been improved as well. So when you're speaking to people on the phone, the unwanted background noise is reduced. And I can confirm that works really well. Ironically, I never talk about the calling capabilities of smartphones on smartphone reviews, but it's worth mentioning on this one because it's genuinely impressive. Phone calls on the Pixel 8 Pro are noticeably clearer than the Pixel 7 Pro. Call screen has also been improved, and that's when the phone deals with potentially nuisance calls for you and they promise up to 50% less spam, which again, I can't really test, but it's nice to know. There is one new AI feature that I absolutely love. If you've got a web page open and you long press the power button, you can ask the Pixel 8 Pro to read that page for you. And it reads it out aloud with very spookily human-like intonation. It's really useful when you're walking the dog or doing the housework or doing something where you don't wanna sit there and read it yourself. Here's an example. Google announces Pixel 8, Pixel 8 Pro, Pixel Watch 2, and Buds Pro. The Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro have the iPhone firmly in their sights, and the Pixel Watch 2 is, clearly, on a mission to ensure Google's wearable resides on as many Pixel phone owners' wrists as possible. The Pixel Buds Pro? Well, they're more than just new colors. But the big changes to AI come with the camera system. The first thing is best take. Now, we've all had that situation where you're taking a group photo and Dave is looking over there, Sarah's got her eyes closed, someone's looking at the floor. Basically, best take enables you to fix those photos. And it relies on you taking several photos at once, obviously, but you can then pick the best expressions from each photo to make a proper group photo where everyone is looking at the camera and everyone has their eyes open. Now, because I don't have any friends and because I was being careful where I took and showed this phone during the embargo period, I did this on my own. So my girlfriend shot this photo of me at Warwick Castle and, well, as you can see, you can pick a different expression and it does a very good job of replacing your face. They've also improved Magic Eraser, so it now completely redraws the pixels that you leave behind when you take things out of the frame and there's less smudging compared to the Pixel 7 Pro. They've also improved the Magic Editor, which is when you can move things around in the frame. It's not perfect, you know, you do need the right setting and the right photo to make this work perfectly, but you can have a lot of fun with it. But one of the most impressive new AI features is called Audio Magic eraser. And the best way to describe this is that it gives you a kind of virtual mixing desk for any piece of video footage. So if you film yourself in a park and you've got birds tweeting, you've got yourself talking, you've got wind noise, you've got people talking in the background, you get individual access to the volume for each type of audio. So you can take down the birds tweeting, you can reduce the wind noise, you can give your voice a bit of a boost. You can get rid of completely the people chattering away in the background. To demonstrate this, I'm going to give you three different examples. The first one is at Warwick Castle, and this was shot at the top of the castle tower. It was a bit windy. There were people talking in the background. Watch this. It's also worth bearing in mind that you can do this with any piece of video footage. It doesn't have to be shot on the Pixel 8 Pro. So for instance, a few weeks back, I took the S23 Ultra to London and had a nightmare with the audio. To be honest, the S23 Ultra didn't deal with it very well. So again, watch this. Once again, let me know what you think in the comments, please, guys. And now on to my conclusion about these two phones. I think you're gonna find this interesting. Once again, let me know what you think in the comments, please, guys. And now on to my conclusion about these two phones. I think you're gonna find this interesting. The last test is possibly the most challenging. I took this phone to London yesterday and walked through the busiest part of London. It's the busiest tourist area. And well, here's the result.
What better place to test Google's Audio Magic Eraser than in the capital? So I'm in London now, I've got Big Ben just up there, it's windy, there's loads of tourists everywhere, there's traffic noise, it's a, it's a mess audio-wise, so it's going to be really interesting to see how well it copes with this. And uh, yeah, this is, of all the tests, I do quite a lot of this vlogging, and whenever I do it on a smartphone in a busy city, with traffic like that passing, it's a real pain in the backside because I have to keep going back and re-recording and it's horrible. So I'm hoping if Google has got this right, it's gonna make a massive difference for when I'm shooting with a smartphone. What better place to test Google's Audio Magic Eraser than in the capital? So I'm in London now, I've got Big Ben just up there. It's windy, there's loads of tourists everywhere, there's traffic noise. It's a, it's a mess audio-wise, so it's going to be really interesting to see how well it copes with this. And uh, yeah, this is, of all the tests, I do quite a lot of this vlogging, and whenever I do it on a smartphone in a busy city, with traffic like that passing, it's a real pain in the backside because I have to keep going back and re-recording, and it's horrible. So I'm hoping if Google has got this right, it's going to make a massive difference for when I'm shooting with a smartphone. Just like the other AI camera features, Audio Magic Eraser isn't literally magic. You can't polish a you know what, but the things it does with audio are so smart and they will get people out of trouble. If you're looking to use this phone as a content creation tool, it's utterly brilliant. And there's more stuff coming later this year. So Video Boost is one of those features which takes videos shot on the Pixel 8 Pro and passes them through a HDR pipeline on Google servers and then puts the video back into your Google Photos library. And we're told, and again, we have to take Google's word on this at the moment, that the resulting videos are utterly stunning. I'll be testing that later this year, so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell not to miss that video. The other thing we're getting later this year is Night Sight Video, which should dramatically improve the low light performance of video on this phone. There's also a feature on the way called Zoom Enhance, which is when you can crop into a photo without losing detail, again because of AI. And Google is promising loads of other AI features in the future for the Pixel 8 Pro. The reason for that is because it's the first smartphone in their range to have a custom generative AI image model. So on this device, it can do things which at the moment we rely on with the cloud. It doesn't have to talk to Google's data centers to do that clever AI image stuff. It's all done on this device. Now, with all that said, it would now seem pointless to talk about the regular camera system on this phone, but it isn't. Regular viewers of this channel will know that I'm absolutely obsessed with the Pixel camera system. It's just my favorite smartphone camera on the market. And I've thought a lot about why I like it so much, and I think it comes down to two things. The first thing is the Pixel look. It just has a very distinctive look, which is fairly sharp, fairly dramatic, fairly moody in certain situations. Again, it's not everyone's cup of tea, but it really works for me. And the second thing is the reliability. This thing will take very good photos in any conditions with pretty much any subject. A great example of this is this photo of my dog, Eddie. Now this was in a very dark living room. It's very hard to get across on this image, but that's kind of the point really. So it's dealt with the low light very, very well. And also as with every dog, Eddie wasn't sitting there still. And yes, this is entirely subjective, but I do absolutely love these photos of Warwick Castle. I think they're some of the best that I've taken this year. And remember guys, these are straight out of the camera. There's no editing whatsoever. I love the ultra wide. I love the standard zoom. I love the telephoto because it has that 5X zoom, which is so, so useful. And the fact we get better low light performance across the entire focal range is just the icing on the cake. And yes, the Pixel 8 Pro still takes wonderful low light photos, particularly at night. I love this photo of the grass here. And again, it's just reliable. If you take a photo at night or in a very dark room, it's going to look great. The selfies are fantastic as well. I think that new autofocus system is definitely having an impact on that. I could not wrong foot it. And as mentioned earlier, you do get access to pro camera features on the Pixel 8 Pro. We get white balance, shutter speed, 
ISO and focus with focus peaking. And if you want to, you can shoot 50 megapixel raw images, which I haven't tried yet, but at some stage I will. In terms of video, you've seen the performance of this front facing camera for most of this video. And yes, I do have professional lighting in here, but regardless of that, let me know what you think in the comments below. When it comes to the rear cameras, again, it's really good. I do think the iPhone 15 Pro Max is slightly better still, but the Pixel 8 Pro does a very good job. I would use this for b-roll if I needed to and I can't wait to check out that video boost later this year so again make sure you subscribe not to miss that video so on to the one feature I wasn't expecting and my conclusion the Pixel 8 Pro has a temperature sensor just beneath the flash, which is a curious addition. And it's one of those things that people are speculating as to why it's there and why at the moment we can only measure the temperature of pots and pans and liquids and food. I think it's quite obvious that Google wants us to use this to measure our body temperature, but we can't do that officially at the moment because it's going through the FDA approval process. So at the moment we can just use it to measure, like I say, pots and pans and your baby's milk. Is it accurate? Well, I have absolutely no idea. I have no way of testing that, but it is nice to know that eventually, hopefully, we'll get the FDA approval for measuring body temperature, but it's a nice, interesting feature to talk about. And as I mentioned recently, smartphone innovation has reached a ceiling. So we need interesting stuff to talk about. So in conclusion, the Pixel 8 Pro might be my new favorite phone of 2023, but I'm gonna hold off saying that until I've tried these new features that are dropping later this year, because, well, I think the night sight video and also that video boost technology is gonna be potentially game-changing. However, if you're in the market for a new Android phone, the Pixel 8 Pro should be at the top of your list, despite all of that very clever, useful AI stuff, which is genuinely useful, it's not gimmicky. This is a fantastic flagship phone. It's fast, it's got the purest version of Android, it's got a beautiful, incredibly bright screen. I think it's got the best camera system on the market. It looks stunning, particularly in this bay blue color, and it's cheaper than the iPhone. What more do you want? If you're also considering the Pixel 8, don't worry, I will be doing a comparison video very soon between the Pixel 8 Pro and this one.